go out and introduce Daryl Pollard. Played cornerback for seven seasons in the NFL. Two-time Super Bowl champion with San Francisco in 88 and 89. Uh, Daryl, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Hey, uh, look, I'm looking forward to it. How you guys doing today? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing uh, terrific. Uh, and so are the Niners. I mean, do you see a weakness in this team, Daryl, when you watch it from afar? You know what? It's, it's really, really hard to find that, to be honest with you. Um, I remember before we used to be able to, you know, see a couple spots here and there, but these guys are really playing team football, and uh, there's a lot of team there. I mean, probably most and more than any other team in the league. They, they look extremely strong this year. Hey, Daryl, let me ask you this. You, how has the game of football changed in your eyes since you played? Because you won it in 89 and 90, went back to back. But when you sit down and watch the game, what's the biggest change you see? Man, the money. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> you know what? The game is always going to be a violent game. Um, as much as they try to make it as safe as they can, um, there's some pluses and minuses to that as well. I mean, you know, you want the guys to last as long as they can and, and uh, you know, some of the b- below the knees and, 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 and the head area is, is definitely – the areas that you really want to protect because that seems to be the areas where, you know, we get, we get hurt the most. Uh, but other than that, man, the game is, is open up. It's a, it's a passing game. It's not a run game like it used to be, you know, we're seeing a ball in the air. It reminds me of, you know, the big sky where we used to see the ball in the air 40, 50 times a game. You know, now we're seeing that NFL, nobody's really looking at um, a lot of running, although it's happening from here to there. You know, you, you, you see Mr. McCaffrey's doing his thing. Um, and a few other running backs around the league. But uh, the game is still the game. You know, they throw throwing the same spots on the field, some of the same routes, getting their different ways, and it's uh, it's beautiful to watch. Daryl Pollard joining us on 95.7 The Game, two-time Super Bowl champ with the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, l- let me ask you about Kyle Shanahan. Um, when, when you watch a 49er game and watch their – uh, game plan on offense. What what makes it so difficult to defend? Uh, why is Kyle Shanahan such a such a great offensive um, football coach? Well, you know, first of all, obviously it's the detail, paying attention to details, the things that Bill Walsh used to talk about. Um, he is a a child of nepotism because he's been he's grown up in it his entire life. Um, so to be able to move the X's and O's around and to make things happen and put people in difficult situations to, for defenses that have to cover, um, that in itself is going to, uh, always get you ahead of, of, of many others. Um, it's beautifully orchestrated. Like I said, it's it's just a, for him, to me, it's like, it's not, what can you do? It's, uh, how often and how successful you are doing it because, He's putting the pieces where he wants it, you know, where he wants, and he's got a a really good quarterback and Purdy, who reminds me a lot of Joe, uh, of how he just kind of sits back there, calm, cool, and collected. I think we're starting to see a little bit more expressions out of him than we saw in the beginning because he's even becoming more and more comfortable. But you know, Shanahan's not putting him in those in those tough positions where he's got to throw in tight windows. I mean, there are times when he does, but for the most part. You know, with the athletes he has on the field, he's 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 got a shot at just about anybody he wants to throw the ball to. Yeah, Daryl. Situation, man. That was my next question to you. I mean, we take a million calls. I asked my partner, "How much more do you need to see? Where are we at? Can there be regression with one Brock Purdy? It's incredible, but it's where are you at? Because it sounds like you've seen enough. But when you bring up Joe Montana and you look at the numbers and the starts, Daryl, I'm like. You know, how far does he have to go, or where are you at in what you're seeing from Brock Purdy? So it's interesting because that conversation is had. I, I'm, I'm in a group text with all the old DBs and some of a few of the other guys that played all the way back to Saladin Martin. And Saladin Martin watched, you know, the development of Joe, and he's like, you know what? This is exactly how Joe became who Joe, you know, right? who he became. Uh, it's the exact same steps, you know, he was, you know, Joe was what third third round pick at that time. Although you know, Bro- Bro- Brody's I mean, Purdy's a little bit further behind him. So when you look at that, you like, okay, I got the I got the perfect guy. I got a guy with a lot of skills, a lot of intelligence, and he's a sponge. He's not a know it all. He's not trying to be someone else. He's being himself. 
And I think that the timing of it all came into play because Shanahan was forcing guys to try to play ahead of their game and, and what they could do at the time with both Jimmy and with Lance. And through injuries, he had no choice but to slow it down. So that allowed the perfect mixture. You weren't, you know, mixing oil and vinegar. You actually were, you know, you're mixing sugar and water and it came together. And I think the sweetness is what we're seeing. Daryl, and uh, we're talking to Daryl Pollard, former San Francisco 49er, two-time Super Bowl champion. That's the question that I kind of have, uh, Daryl, is if, if he's played, uh, Purdy's played 10 regular season games. He's 10-0. and 0 got a 70% completion rating and he's got 20 touchdowns to two interceptions. Like my, I've stopped asking, can he keep it up? And I'm starting to ask, well, how can he, how can he play better? Like what does him playing better even look like? Um, I guess we have to wait and see because um, I mean, the guy is making some great moves. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you got the Mahomes out there that can throw the ball at any angle to anybody anywhere on the field, although every now and then he takes risks like he did last night and caused the game to be a lot closer than I thought it should have been. Um, you know, uh, Bert, he stays within himself. Right. At the end of the day, he stays within himself. He doesn't try to play outside of what he knows he can do and do comfortably. And I think that's going to be the challenge for every defensive line is how quick can we get in his face to make him uncomfortable? Um, or, you know, take advantage of maybe some of his attributes that you can't change, like his height. You know, is he going to have to drop the ball a little bit, you know, take a deeper drop to get over guys because they're getting in his face quicker? So a lot of it has to do with that offensive line. So we can't take away from how much better our offensive line got because the line is mm. tremendously, to me, better than what it was last year. Hey, Daryl, you played on some great defensive units uh, in your day with the Niners. Uh, Bosa got his contract in the offseason. Uh, he was worth every penny. They brought in Hargrave. But when I watch Fred Warner and Greenlaw get after it, I mean, I don't know if there's a better linebacker tandem in the game. Can you just share with us your thoughts when you watch Warner and Greenlaw get after it? So anytime you have a set of linebackers, because linebackers weren't built that way and they weren't asked to do as much. Uh, we played, and I think Ray Rhodes was probably one of the first uh, uh, defensive coordinators, or maybe just at this time he was even a DB coach, that uh, brought the linebackers in the room with us and actually studied, um, you know, the passing fl the film and what was going on, and them understanding drops because not only are they there to fill the gaps, they're also there to to to, to fall in those holes. Uh, we saw Ray Lewis do it when he was in Baltimore, and that made him, you know, a, a great linebacker and a Hall of Famer. Um, any linebacker that you can get that has those attributes that can move um, east to west really, really, really quick, identify, understand the routing combinations that are coming on the field and can help those safeties out because corners are going to be on their own. But to give the corners some help, safeties have to come into play. And for safeties to have to come into play, linebackers got to help in that area. So with the game being more passed, you got to have more agile type linebackers. These linebackers are not only big, they're fast, they're strong, and they're extremely intelligent. And so uh, when you have that kind of mixture with two guys that are just, man, they're, they're physical. They're physical. They're, they're ready to get at you. They, you know, they can't wait to eat every play. And, and, and that's, a, that's a different type of linebacker than, um, than when we played back in the day. So, um, no, it's going to be hard to find that combination when you have two guys like that that, that work so well in tandem but not only with their D-line, but also with the secondary. Mm. They, they're, they're the glue to bring the two pieces together. Go ahead, Goo. Hey, hey, Daryl, my partner, we're the odd couple. I love him to death. You know, I got a little more style than him, but I always <laughs> talk about we talk about. You know, if I had a championship ring or rings, I'm the type of dude, Daryl, don't judge me. I'd have it on at the fish fry, it, wherever. I'm, I'm wearing my stuff. So I said, Daryl has two. I'm going to ask him, Steiny. Do you wear yours throughout the week? You, you got them somewhere tucked away. What do you do with your rings? Um, they're, they're put away, but, you know, I mean, for different events, I'll bring them out. There you go. Um, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, because of the years of, 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 of damage to your hands, I don't know any, any too many football players that have got straight fingers anymore. Uh, one sits and the other one doesn't. So, you know, you just got to bear with. But, uh, I love yeah. it. 
I mean, I think it's a little too much to wear both of them at the same time. I'm okay. not. I, I, I'm not quite. I'm not quite Jerry Rice, where I could walk around with a big <laughs> helmet on my chest, you know, with a Run DMC chain hanging off my neck. You know, I, I, I'm that. I'm not quite that guy. Uh, yeah, Daryl. We once. Uh, I once got into it with my with my uh, with my co-host. The Warriors had a player, uh, Ivan Ivan Calderon, and he was on the team in training camp. I think I remember this correctly. He ended up getting traded, and they got him. He got a ring the year the Warriors won a championship, <laughs> though he played no games for the Warriors. And Guru saying, "Oh, I'd still wear that ring all over the place." Zero, and I'm like, "You can't, team. you can't wear the ring." He didn't play a game. <laughs> you know what? It's it's sometimes for those guys that that happens to because I can name a couple different situations. I know a guy that's got a ring that only played in the Super Bowl for a team, mm. um, and he wears his very proudly. Um, there are guys that you know didn't touch the field. Um, they got rings. Um, it happens, but at the same time, the work is really done throughout the week. Um, you know, we, we look at our stars, but what makes our stars is everybody else doing their job. Mm. So you can't take away just because you haven't seen a guy on game day. You have no idea all the work and what he was asked to do during the week to help prepare everybody else to go out and make it happen. Wow. Daryl, great stuff, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. I got a and, quick uh, one for him. Uh, and my guy's got one for you. We got a mutual friend, Billy from Atco Pest Control. He said he golfed okay. with you the other day. Uh, we may get on the <laughs> links. Anything we need to know about his game on the links? So I didn't see anybody play. I was at one hole. I didn't get a chance to see. I kind of told the guys, you know, the distance because it was one of those hole in one. You know, when whatever the prize was, I, I don't know if I should disclose that or not. But anyway, having said that, I I can't tell you anything about his game. So okay. I can't. I, what I can tell you is there were two foursomes on every hole, and they finished that tournament within four and a half, five hours. So I would have to say that you have a pretty good group of golfers all around, and they all knew what they were doing. Um, so that questions. Uh, is he really doing his job or is he at the golf course? That, that, you know, other than that, I'm going to leave it be. I got what's you. up? What's your hand? What's your handicap now? I'm not telling you. Come on. I, I, I can't tell you. Well, I okay, can't tell you. Know what? you. I know what it is by the uh -oh. fact that you're not telling me you're an 18. Yeah. Okay. I'll take an 18. <laughs> I'll take an 18. Love I'll take 18. So look, so when we go out and play, you gotta give me. You gotta give me some strokes, and I'm gonna put some money down, and Let we'll me, go for it. I'll take 18. I'm gonna have to do some homework. I'm gonna have to do a little homework first. Maybe I'll call Jerry Rice. I'm sure you played with him. Oh man. Yeah, I played Jerry before. Thanks uh, a lot, man. Hey, Dale. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Really appreciate it, and hopefully, we can get you on down the line a little bit. Hey, man. Thank you guys, man. I enjoyed it. Hey, uh, anytime, Holland.